Hi there everyone, welcome to Engineering with Preetam. In this video, we will explore the basic tools in PTC Curio Parametric to help you in creating 2D sketches for your 3D model. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we directly jump in, let's talk about the importance of sketching in Curio Parametric. Sketching, we can say, is foundation of your 3D model in any parametric software whether it is Creo Parametric or ENX or NX or SOLIDWORKS we start with sketch so it is very important for us to create accurate and well-defined sketch because that will allow you to build robust and parametric model in this video we will cover the essential sketching tool and technique to get you started so now let's jump into our screen and as you may see here I have already opened PTC Creo Parametric. Now in order to begin with sketch what we need to do is we need to click here on new and now we need to click on sketch. We can actually directly go inside part but I'm just quickly showing you if you really only want to focus with sketch then how you can do that. So you need to click on sketch and that's how guys we can create sketch. But I would say um, we will not use this way since we obviously going to create 3D model out of that 2D sketch. So therefore I would suggest you to click on new, then click on part, then click on solid. So we will be doing solid part modeling. And then here you can define your file name. So in order to define file name in PTC Creo, there are few rules. Um, you cannot write name like my first class. Because whenever you hit enter, here you can see it says that illegal characters in my first class. So whenever we define name in PTC Creo, you may use underscore. Okay. Or you can also use hyphen you cannot leave it as an empty space now let's again try to click on ok and this time we saw that we are in our part environment now to begin with a new sketch uh, what we need to do is we need to click here on sketch and then we need to select the plane now before we select any plane let's turn on the plane tag display so that we can understand which plane is what so this one is front plane, this one is top and then this one is right. So let's start with our front plane. For that you simply need to make a left click. Now click on sketch and that's how guys we can select our plane. Now if you haven't followed my previous video you may find it like this because the sketching plane is not defined parallel to screen. I would suggest you to see our setting video so that you can set up everything how it needs to be for the time being what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on sketch view which basically will make the plane which is this front plane parallel to the screen such that we can see everything orthogonally and can start with sketch now to sketch a line what we need to do is we simply need to click on this line tool so just make a left click here and then you can start your start point from anywhere just make a left click and that's how guys we can start creating line now in order to finish this line tool you need to make another left click such that you can complete this line segment now even after you make left click you will see the line tool is still enabled so if you want to create another line segment you can do that by just making another left click again but let's say you want to exit the tool in such case what you can do is you can press escape button or just press middle scroll wheel mouse by pressing middle scroll wheel mouse or escape button will cause discontinuation of the line segment but still here we can see the line tool is still engaged or line tool is still active so let's say you want to create another line segment you can do that but let's say you do not want to do that then in such scenario you may again want to press your scroll wheel or escape button such that we can come out of line tool so that's how guys we have created our first ever sketch using line tool 
Isn't it cool guys? I mean it is very easy and intuitive and you may also see all the dimensions are already there. So you do not need to worry about making your sketch under constraint or over constraint. Because this is beauty of the software. It will automatically create all necessary dimensioning which later can be changed based on our need. So now as we can see all these values present but before we move further let me just quickly disable this grid view because I really don't like it. So we can customize it based on our need. Now in order to change these values what we can do is we can define it. Let's say I want to make this 0 instead of 40. So in this way I can do that. Let's say I want this value to be 22.5 we can do that as well. Let's make this one as 90. That's how we can make it 90. And I also would like to define the length of this line segment instead of other dimension constraining it, which in this case is this 202.02 .02 and 195. You can do that as well. You just need to select the line tool and here you have got this option of length. Just click on it and that's how guys we can define length as well. Now you might also have seen when we define this length value the entire sketch got changed so you may press ctrl and z to see how it was before. So you can actually always play with these values even though this moved downward but no worry guys you can um, you know drag it and can place it upward. Now here what we need to do is you need to define two values here as well. First one you would like to define the angle so let's make it 270 let's make it 200 so in this way guys you can further constrain your sketch you can also lock these dimension just by clicking on the dimension and click on lock so lock means that you may not able to change these values until and unless you manually override but while editing the other values may not able to change these values so like this you can further completely make this entity fully constrained now let me click here on ok which will basically save this sketch so this is how our first sketch looked like and that we have created only utilizing line segment here on hide and that's how guys we can hide it now let's again jump into sketch tool but this time instead of selecting its sketch and selecting the plane I'm gonna let you know another way of creating or going inside sketch. You can simply select the plane in which you want to form the sketch and then press S button. By pressing S button you will be in sketch mode. Let me cancel it and show you how we went inside sketch mode by just pressing S button because here you may see in bracket s is the shortcut for sketch okay so this is the shortcut way of activating sketch or going inside sketch just by selecting the plane and by pressing s button now again i'm gonna click here on sketch view to make this plane parallel to screen now this time instead of line i'm going to use a rectangle so let's click here on rectangle and now define your first endpoint now we will define second endpoint and that's how guys we will able to form the rectangle and as we have seen in our previous video that we form the geometry first and then adjust their values so we're gonna do the same here and let me make the length 360 and width as 220 and then we have two more constraints so let's make this half of 360 which would be 180 and half of 220 which will be 110. Now let's press ok and in this way guys we have formed our another sketch. Okay now we just saw how we can create rectangle using a one kind of rectangle but there are so many other kind of rectangle if you see here. Now we're gonna quickly go inside and we'll see other type of rectangle. Now before actually we go inside I also would like to do some customization which every user should do which is defining the model setting properly. So what I did is in case of entity display I increased the edge display quality and made anti-aliasing as 16x. 
now here you will see improvement in the way how our sketch and model look now again we are back in sketch tool and let me quickly hide the previous sketch and this time we will be playing with slanted rectangle so this one is also straightforward you just need to define first point and second point since this is slanted so that's why we can make it at a certain angle let's say you have a requirement of center rectangle you can create it as well there is one more which is parallelogram so here you have option to create a parallelogram directly in just one click so this was about rectangle now we're gonna have a look on sketching circle and arcs in order to create circle you have the circle command so just click on it and define the center point define the dia or radius and that's how guys we can create circle then we have got this concentric circle let's say you have already one circle there and you want to create a circle which will have a same center like previous one you can do that utilizing this concentric circle let's say you want to create three point or three tangent circle i'm gonna show you a very um, you know important and very basic maths geometry figure that we used to draw in past which basically makes circum circle and three point tangent which basically help you to create in circle that's how guys we may able to utilize these other variants of circle then we have got arc and arc also we have got a very similar kind of functionality or capability like we have got this three point arc which can be also used as tangent arc so just select the end point and start drawing this and in this way guys we may able to form tangent and here what you are seeing is the constraint so sometime when we are drawing these entities we also have an option to create constraint these constraints are known as on the fly constraint although we have also have an option to constrain them at later stage for example let's say you formed a line and this is not constrained and we want to create it as a horizontal you always can do it later on but you also have an option to do it while drawing itself you may see this kind of constraint will automatically get recommended by the software so you may choose them and can utilize them now let's go back inside arc so we just saw three point arc which was you know taking three point and that's how we can form arc or we can see this arc tangent to a line segment or even it can be tangent to another arc like this then we have got the center arc which is basically seems like you know we are drawing a circle and then we are defining start and end point of arc then we have got this three tangent arc which is basically just like um, we are forming arc inside a triangle sometimes it is very useful so let me quickly show you how you can so just need to click on three point tangent and that's how guys we can form this three point tangent arc now let's see the concentric arc which is very similar to concentric circle so these all arc will be having same center point so let's create the conic arc as well which will help you to create arc like this so what actually is conic arc the conic arc is a curve that represent a section of a conical surface such as ellipse parabola or hyperbola these conic arc are versatile and provide smooth transition between other sketch entities making them useful in various design application in creo parametric we can create easily utilizing this conic sketching tool so i do not want to make this video too monotonous by making it too lengthy therefore we will continue the remaining tool in our upcoming session that's all guys from my side in this video i hope you find this video helpful and informational if you have got any doubt or question in your mind please feel free to ask them in comment down below and we will try to reply you as soon as possible also please don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow these kind of productivity tutorials till then take care and bye bye